Welcome to part four of my video series featuring the Mercedes-Benz M272 V6 and the M273 V8. Right here in front of me is a V6 and to my right nose in is a V8. And we're going to be looking at both of these engines throughout this series. What we're focusing on is getting ready to do a 100,000 mile inspection on these two engines. The S-Class here has 98,000 miles on it, and this C-Class with the V6 has 92,000 miles on it. In the previous video, I talked about the importance of why we do 100,000 mile inspection. But before I actually get into working on these engines, I think I need to talk about tools. Because if you've not worked on these newer engines before, there are some differences in the type of tools you're going to need. If you come from the old series, you know, the 123, 126, R129, and so on, you're going to be a little surprised. And what I want to do is just take you inside the engine compartment on this V6 and show you why you may need to pick up a few extra tools before you start working on your own. Take a close look at the fasteners. And there are lots of them. Does anyone here see a standard hex type bolt or nut? Even getting down on the engine accessories in the front, look at that. No hex Allen bolts and no regular type of bolts. So this means a lot of tools in your toolbox may not work on these engines. When working on these engines, as well as any other engine, one of the biggest time wasters is running around looking for tools. You've all been there. Any of you who have worked on cars, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You can't find one tool, somebody borrowed it, or you don't know where you put it, and you'll spend 20 minutes looking for a tool. Or you get into a situation like on one of these engines where you got a real tight bolt to get to. So you're running around trying to find some universal, some extension, some whatever, and you've wasted another 20 minutes. So what I've learned to do is come up with what I call my job-specific toolbox. It's right here. You know, I have one of those great big red rollaways like everybody else, but it's so heavy, it's so cumbersome. So when I'm doing a specific job, it's going to take a while, and what we're doing here is going to take a few days, maybe a few weeks as we work through the series. You know, I want a job-specific toolbox. That's for the M272 and M273 V8, and that's what I have here. <laughs> I know there's more than one way to skin a cat, and I'm sure some of you have your own systems of doing this. So this is just one way to approach this problem. And I've done it with this toolbox here and I wanna show you how this works. And along with this job specific toolbox, I have this tray that can go up and down and can slide underneath the front bumper because I want that real close to the engine compartment. I don't want to be throwing bolts behind me. I don't want to be dropping bolts on, on the ground because the other big time waster is when you go to put everything back together, you can't find the fasteners or they're all mixed together in one bucket. And you're sitting there spending five minutes trying to figure out, okay, this one goes in this hole. You're dropping them in holes. You're moving them around, hoping you get the right bolts so you get this all back together. Number one, go through your toolbox, get the tools you need, Put them wherever you're going to be working. And number two, have a way to keep track of the fasteners. So when you go to put them all back together, you're not wasting another hour. And I'm sure some of you are laughing. Thinking, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, Kent. So let me show you this toolbox. So the box itself has been modified. It had a cover that closed. So that cover's gone. I like this top section open all the time. And this is where I put all the job specific tools. Now underneath here, I just have an assortment of standard tools. So over here is just screwdrivers. In this drawer, pliers, cutters, and so on. This drawer, I have some standard metric sockets, metric wrenches, some ratcheting box wrenches. I have my ratchets. But these aren't the primary tools I'm going to be using. Primary tools I'm going to be using are up here. And then in the bottom drawer, you know, hammers, 
big tools. These are the big ones you need. All right, so that gives you kind of an overview of how I've arranged this. So when I'm done working on a specific job, everything goes back either in my big toolbox or in some other drawer. So this top section is always empty. So now, this is a modification I made, which makes this toolbox very handy. I took the lid, reversed it, and made it a table. All right. So now you can see where I'm going with this. All right, there you go. So you roll this into where you're working. And these magnetic trays are very handy for sorting. And this is where I put the bolts. I'll even throw little post-it notes in here if I'm worried about getting confused. I believe the most important thing you'll need is a good set of Torx bits complete. Now the reason I like these is you can actually read them. T40, T30. Um, some of these sockets you can't even read. You want to be able to read the number. And these are e torque sockets here all the way from E24 down to E4. And you're going to find a lot more e-torx bolts on these engines than any of the previous engines. And the most important one is an E10. Right there. You saw all those fasteners around the valve cover, around the engine. They're all E10. So I have three E10 sockets. An extra one right there. I also have a nut driver. These don't come in most tool kits, but sometimes a nut driver you want a finesse job, you're going to just be able to run that e torx bolt in by hand. Number two, some type of a power tool. This will save you a lot of time on these engines because there are a lot of fasteners. You've all seen these electrical ratchets, and these are great for something that has, you know, over 15 pounds of torque because you're going to actually have to use this to break it free, and then you can run it out with a power trigger. But for me, this is my favorite tool, working on these engines. Uh, it has very nice ergonomics. You can put a number of extensions. These are quick disconnects. So this is one for a quarter inch socket. And what I really like about this is you can control this. It can turn so slowly, watch this, that you can actually put this on a bolt and start it. And you have to feel it, okay? A lot of people say, oh, no, I never use a power tool to start a bolt. Well, you can feel it. You, you know, you'll get used to lining it up and slowly starting that bolt in. And it's just going to save you having to turn it in by hand and then get your tool and drive it in. The problem is, how do you hold the bolt in there? Well, I got online and I tried to find a while back a magnetic E Torx sockets. I couldn't find them anywhere. So I made my own magnetic socket. There's the magnet right in there. This is just going to be a short demonstration, but you're going to figure out very quickly why I think that a magnetic e torque socket is <laughs> so cool. All right. So we can take this out. Watch. You know, I've watched people, you know, work on these engines with a magnet, trying to hold the magnet next to the, the socket, hoping you don't drop it in the engine. But now watch as I reinstall this. What's nice on this is I can adjust this for tightness. And with experimentation, checking with a torque wrench, I can put all these fasteners back in at the proper torque without picking up a torque wrench. And that's a big time saver, too. So I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to get it real straight, and then I'm just going to easily, there it goes, see? And I, I felt it. You, you just feel it real slow. And then once you've got it started, then you just run it on in. You see that? That's a, too loose, of course, but I can roll this up to 8. Okay, let's try 12. Okay, that's probably the correct torque. So... This tool here, right here, is my favorite when working on these engines. It's one thing I should mention here 
is make sure you get a really good quality adapter. You want this to really hold a socket. Some of the cheaper ones, the sockets will literally fall off. So make sure that you get a very good quality driver. The next priority, in my opinion, would be torque wrenches. You know, you're going to need a good click stop 3 8 inch drive torque wrench. But that's not enough because so many of these fasteners are very low torque. This isn't going to work. You're going to need a smaller quarter inch drive torque wrench that goes way down low for these small fasteners. I can't stress enough how important lighting is. <laughs> it doesn't matter what automotive engine you're working on. You need good lighting, and I have become a huge fan of headlamps. Rather than moving a light all over the place, I prefer a headlamp. And this one's really unique. And be prepared here to see some magic. <laughs> you know, I love headlights, but when you leave them on all the time, they drain the battery. Well, watch this. <laughs> I can get in here and look at everything I want, and when I'm done, I just turn it off. Or I can go like this, look around, turn it off. And along with a good multifunction headlamp, I like this articulating magnetic light. You can come in here and you can adjust it to come right back at you if you want. So what I decided to do, I'm going to offer both of these lamps together in a very attractive price. So you're going to need at least a strong 90 degree pick tool, but I recommend something like this where you get the whole set. They're not expensive. I'm going to include this in my toolkit for these engines. And I'll put a link below, but it'll include some of the items you see here. So if you'd like a kit which includes a lot of these tools that you see here, I have this on my website and I'll put a link in the show more below this video. Here is a little bent screwdriver that I made to help remove a lot of the electrical plugs on these engines. And these also you don't have to have, but they can be very handy. I have a couple of ratcheting box e-torx wrenches. This is a 10 and a 12, and this is a six and an eight. The 10, once again, real handy working on the back side of the engine. And then this is a very small ratchet quarter inch drive that I can attach some of these special bits to. This is a universal E10. If any of you have worked with universal joints, you know that can be handy in very tight places. This one is also a universal joint. It connects to my driver but it also swivels. This can be very helpful if you have to kind of go around a corner. And then right here is another E10 socket, quarter inch drive. You never have enough E10 sockets. This next tool is not a must have, but let me tell you, <laughs> if you're working on replacing these spark plugs in these engines, they're down in there deep and you have to get down in the hole to get on the spark plug. It's really nice having a magnetic spark plug socket on a tight swivel. Why is a tight swivel so important? When you put the spark plug in there, not only will it not fall out, but because this is a tight swivel, you can line this up and you can use this to carefully drop down in the hole and start this spark plug by hand without cross-threading. I'm sure you all know what this is. Some of you have probably had the same frustration with these that I've had over the years is trying to get this on the oil filter cap and trying to get it loose without damage, particularly on these newer plastic caps that hold the oil filters in place. Now, the ones I've used in the past are aluminum like this. And look, you've got to drive it on there. It's supposed to come down and then drive on this little hump and you end up trying to torque this and it just rounds out the cap. <laughs> I've even had the factory one for years. This is Mercedes genuine. The idea here, it's the same. You drive it on, but then you have to tighten this bolt because a lot of times this will start to spin too. And then the bolt goes into the side of that oil filter cap and rips it open. So 
I've given up. I finally found what I think is the best oil filter wrench, and that's this one right here. It looks plastic, but it's not. It's heavy aluminum, and notice how it has deep flat sides, real deep, and the corners are notched out. So when you go to torque on this, if you have to really torque, the sharp edges aren't going to cut in and damage that oil filter cap. And finally, this tool here. Anybody want to guess what that's for? <laughs> we actually make these. I have Jerson make these for me because we've gone through an evolution of coming up with a tool that works real well. If you're going to use this tool, though, you're going to need another extension. Now, this may give you a clue what you're going to do with this. Just get a you know, 10 to 12-inch extension, grab my tool, and let me show you what this does. Let's put it together real hard, right? And suddenly you have a very long belt tensioner tool. I can go down right underneath here and get on this. Watch how much torque you have on that. See, you can just rotate that down, lift the belt right off. So anytime you are doing any maintenance on the front end here, changing pulleys or alternator, or changing the belt, you have to have something that can help you release the pressure on this tensioner down here. So notice how rigid that is. Guess what else you can use this for? Okay, look at how nice that fits on there. And <laughs> of course, you can use a ratchet, you can use a breaker bar, but look, you can take this special wrench of mine and look at how nice that loosens up that oil filter cap. So this is the tool set I'm going to use to begin these 100,000 mile inspections on these two cars. I'm not saying that you need every one of these tools. I know some of you might say, Kent, why do I need all those tools if I'm just going to change the spark plug? Well, you can work up to this. You don't have to run out and buy all these tools. But when you start getting into some of these bigger repairs, particularly if you have to end up changing the intake manifold, <laughs> I can almost guarantee you're going to be glad you had every one of these tools. I know some of you are saying, yeah, I know what you're talking about, Kent. I'm sure I missed some tools. We might see some other things crop up during our inspection and repair on these vehicles. And right here, I've started to collect the parts. See that? This isn't all of them. And so I think there are some things even uh, the Mercedes service techs won't look at at 100,000 miles. But these are things I think you should look at because we're talking about preventative maintenance. We're not just talking about repairs. So I'm starting to collect the parts that are related to these 10 key issues. And we'll start talking about those in the next video. So stay tuned.